Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about Cameron Hurley. I randomly started following her a couple years ago on Twitter uh, just because I thought she was smart and funny, but I never got around to reading any of her novels. I planned to, but I didn't really know where to start, uh, and then when I saw that she had a book of short stories coming out, I ordered it immediately. Short stories are great introductions to authors who are new to you. They really let you get a sense of what the author is capable of, and if you don't like one story, there's another one in like 15 pages. Her story collection is called Meet Me in the Future. The coolest thing about sci-fi short stories especially is that every story can take you to completely different universes with different species and technologies. Everything is completely different from one story to the next. This collection has floating cities, mercenaries who can hop between bodies to perform assassinations, a mechanic who falls in love with a sentient spaceship, storytellers who use human bodies as historical texts through burns and scars. Each story takes you to an entirely new world, and it's fascinating to see how these conflicts play out in such a wide variety of settings. While the settings are different, there are similar themes running through a lot of these stories. There's a lot of conflict between different social classes, there's wars happening as backdrops through several of the stories. One thing that I really like is that in a lot of these stories, the protagonists face a struggle to find the truth, whatever that looks like in their universes. They push through what is easy and convenient to reach what is true and difficult. Most of the protagonists tend to be loners who just don't want anybody else around, but usually by the end of a story they learn that friendship and having somebody else on your side is what makes life worth it. Science fiction is often pretty progressive, or at least it can be, but one thing that I like about this story collection is that it doesn't need to comment on the power of its female characters. It's just expected that women can be heroes or villains. Nobody within the stories themselves says, oh wow, look at this woman acting uncharacteristically masculine in her power. It doesn't even occur to them. Women are just as strong as men throughout the stories. And the same can be said for LGBTQ plus characters in this book. It's really kind of refreshing to see that if a character is gay, they're just gay, and it's not questioned, it's not a plot point. It's just who they're attracted to. In one story, one character can't determine the gender of another character, and so she asks for that character's pronouns, and then the story uses those pronouns throughout the rest of the story, and the story just goes on. It's not a situation. Even among the chaos of these worlds in these stories, it's stuff like that that makes it seem hopeful, even though there's a lot of really, like, scary, dark stuff that happens in here, there is a sense of hope that things can get better. That's one thing that I said in my last review as well. I look for hope in the fiction that I read, especially um, even though I want my literature to reflect the social problems that are happening in the world right now, uh, it is still psychologically beneficial to read some fiction that isn't all gloom and doom and despair. If you're a writer, that's one thing that I think you should always include in your stories. And I took a couple of other writing lessons from this as well. One is that, especially again in sci-fi short fiction, it's important to reveal the world to the reader as soon as possible. And that's something that Hurley does really well. In her stories, you know the rules of that universe within the first couple of pages. In the first story, you see the protagonist and his assistant purchasing dead bodies that they want to be fresh so that he can swap his consciousness into these dead bodies at opportune times. And so immediately you know this is something that can happen in this universe. Another thing that I've learned in writing classes that I think Hurley does especially well is raising the stakes for her characters. The best way to make your stories interesting and page turners is to be sure that when things go wrong, they go really wrong. In most of the stories in this book, I was completely thrown by an unexpected twist, whether that was the murder of a major character or something else that completely upended the story in a way I wasn't expecting. There is no time to rest for these characters. The second that one character gets to just go back to her apartment, crack open a beer and just sit on the couch, some thugs bust in and beat the crap out of her. You don't get a moment to breathe in these stories and that really keeps things moving. I'm really glad I finally got to read some Cameron Hurley after following her on Twitter for a couple of years. I plan to move on to some of her novels in 2020, but I do think that this is a great introduction to her for anybody, so I'm recommending this to everyone. Follow the links below to find your local libraries or independent bookstores, but I'll also include links to Meet Me in the Future, as well as Hurley's other novels and essays. You can also subscribe to her Patreon, where you'll get exclusive stories, and I'm also going to include a link to her Twitter as well, so you can follow her there. That's it for today. Thank you for watching Margie. I'm sending you my copy of The Atlas of Reds and Blues. I'll put that in the mail sometime in the next couple of days. Sorry, it's a little busy before the holidays. 
Thank you, everybody. Now close the laptop, put the phone away, and pick up a book. I'll see you next time.